in the first part of this problem, we're going to look for the expected value of r and the expected value of r squared. And then we're going to be dealing with the ground state, so that will correspond to the case where n is equal to 1, l is equal to 0, and m is equal to 0. And then in order to look for these two values, I'm going to start with the general case. So I'm going to look for the absolute uh, the expected value of r to the power of n. So once we find this expression in terms of n, we can substitute in n equal to 1 and n equal to 2 to find these two values. So now for the rest of this video, we are going to focus on finding the expected value of r to the power of n. So in order to evaluate this expected value, we take the integral from 0 to infinity of r to the power of n. So this is the expression that we want to find the expected value for. And then we multiply it by the probability density function of r. And that is going to be equal to r squared times the absolute value of r10 squared and then dr. So all we have to do is to evaluate this integral. So I can obviously combine these two terms. So we have r to the power of n plus 2. And then for this expression over here, you can look up the table that Griff, uh, Griffiths provides us with in the book. And then for r10, this is going to be equal to 2 divided by a to the power of 3 times e to the power of negative r divided by a squared dr. So now all we have to do is to evaluate this integral. So we have an integral from 0 to infinity. And so of, of course we can pull out these constants. So we have 4 divided by a to the power of 3. So don't forget we need to square this because of the square. And in the end we have r to the power of n plus 2 times e to the power of negative 2r over a dr. And then what I'm going to do next is that I'm going to do a substitution. So I'm going to let u be equal to 2r over a. And then under this substitution, when r is equal to 0, u is also going to be equal to 0. When r is equal to infinity, u is also going to be equal to infinity. So we have infinity. And then for this r over here, we have au divided by 2 to the power of n plus 2. And then for this term, we just have e to the power of negative u. And then for dr, we can just differentiate both sides. We can see we get something like this. So you can see that a over 2 du is equal to dr. So for dr, we're going to replace it by a over 2 du. And then of course we can pull out these a over 2s over here. So we have a total number of n plus 2 plus 1 number of a over 2s. So if we pull them all out, we have n plus 3 a over 2s. And in the end, we have this integral from 0 to infinity u to the power of n plus 2 and times e to the power of negative u du. And so you can see that our expression is equal to some constants multiplied by this integral. And so all we have to do now is to evaluate this integral. And then in order to evaluate this integral, I'm going to invoke the gamma function. So let's just copy this out first. So a over 2 and then to the power of n plus 3. And then if you look at this function over here, I'm going to rewrite it as something like this. So u to the power of n plus 3 minus 1. So you can see that it's exactly the same thing. So n plus 3 minus 1, that's just equal to n plus 2. And the reason I'm writing it out like this is because the gamma function evaluated at z is given by this expression. So u to the power of z minus 1 e to the power of negative u, so this should be a u, du. So this is going to be how a gamma function is defined. And then using integration by parts, you can actually easily prove that if your input is an integer, let's say n, then this gamma function is going to be equal to n minus 1 factorial. And so you can see that in our case, this is actually this in integral over here that we need to evaluate. This is actually just the gamma function evaluated at n plus 3, because you can just match the terms over here. So this is just equivalent to the z that you see over here. So this is just gamma function evaluated at n plus 3. And then according to this formula, this gamma function evaluated at n plus 3 should be equal to n plus 2 factorial. So if you don't know how you can derive this result, don't worry, it's actually pretty simple. 
and I'm not going to go into details in this video, but uh, you can try it out yourself. You can just use integration bypass to prove this. It's actually simpler than you might think. So if you're interested, you can look this up yourself. But I'm just going to use this result, and you can see that this entire integral is actually just going to be equal to n plus 2 factorial. So you can see that we're essentially done. The expected value of r to the power of n is just equal to 4 divided by a to the power of 3, and then we have a over 2 to the power of n plus 3, and then we multiply it by n plus 2 factorial. And then now that we have this formula, we are now ready to evaluate the two expressions that we are interested in, the expected value of r and the expected value of r squared. So for the expected value of r, we just substitute in n is equal to 1. So when n is equal to 1, you have a over 2 to the power of 4, so that's just a to the power of 4 divided by 16. And then we have 1 plus 2 factorial, so that's just 3 factorial, which is equal to 6. So of course you can see that some of these terms, they can cancel out. So in the end, you have 3 over 2 times a. So this is the expected value of r. And then we can do the same thing for r squared. So at this point, this is rather trivial. So we have a over 2 to the power of 5. So we have a to the power of 5 divided by 2 to the power of 5, which is just 32. And then we have 2 plus 2 factorial, so 4 factorial, which is just equal to 24. And uh, we can use a to factor these terms. So this is 3, this is 4, and this further cancels out. And then this becomes a squared. So in the end, you have 3a squared. And so there you have it. This is your expected value of r squared.